Lumbedu was feeling on top of the very stars, let alone on top of the world, and he was as happy as a starveling beggar's stomach which has just digested a stolen fowl. He was as happy as a lion with a million teeth and a thousand mouths. Now, if Lumbedu was as proud of his being a chief as a lion with many mouths, his first wife, Ojoyo, was as proud of her suddenly finding herself a queen as a vulture with many gazards. Every morning, she was carried in an elaborately carved letter to the riverside by a veritable bevy of beauties from her husband's harem, and there she was bathed smeared with crushed Dambodi leaves all over until she smelled like a big, fat, sweet-scented flower. Then she was bedecked with copper necklaces and bracelets. She feasted all day long on wild honey, corn cakes, very fatty meat, and greasy yam stew. She was shrill and cruel to the rest of the wives of Lumbedu, and she could kill any of them on the slightest provocation. She was, however, a woman with two guilty secrets lying heavy on her rotten soul, and both these secrets would have earned her a slow and miserable death at the hands of the tribal avengers, had they become known. Firstly, she had poisoned the kind-hearted Vunakwe, who had been Lumbedu's second wife, and had buried her secretly in the hut where she, Ojoyo, always slept. And she had lied to Lumbedu by saying that Vunakwe had fallen into the Zambezi. Secondly, Ojoyo had a secret lover whom she kept imprisoned in a cave in the forest and whom she always visited whenever the flame of desire burned within her. This secret lover was a young boy of 18 years and Ojoyo knew that seducing a person of that age who had not been initiated into manhood according to the custom was an offense punishable by death. No persons under 25 are allowed to so much as kiss or be kissed by members of the opposite sex. Ojoyo had never asked her prisoner lover who his parents were and all she knew about the youth was that his name was Kadimu. Kadimu had been captured by Lumbedu's warriors while wandering aimlessly in the forest, and being a member of an unknown tribe, he had been brought into Lumbedu's kraal for questioning and execution. Kadimu, however, could not speak the language of Lumbedu's tribe, and his only answer to the harsh question by the warriors as to the name and whereabouts of his tribe had been nothing but a series of pathetic head shakings. Ojoyo had suddenly felt herself drawn to the godlike youth Kadimu and had asked Lumbedu to give her the captive ostensibly for torture and killing, but in reality to imprison him in a cave and use him as a secret source of pleasure. <laughs>